Hey, it's Noel Powell with CreationEffects.com and today we're animating 3D hummingbirds in After Effects. This little guy can be added to your 3D scenes or your motion designs uh, with minimal work. All those little lifelike movements that you see while it's hovering, those are all automatic. Uh, the only thing you would need to do is create a motion path for it by keyframing its position uh, to tell it where to go. And I'm going to show you how to do all that in this video. I'm adding this hummingbird to the flocks template, which has always been a, a very popular template since it first came out in 2017. It lets After Effects users add realistic custom birds or flocks of birds to their videos. And it originally had 12 species to choose from. And I recently decided that I would add a couple birds as part of an update. So it now has this hummingbird and pterodactyls, which is a pretty random combo. But it already had bats and those aren't really birds either. So I figured why not? So I'll have a link in the description if you want to watch the demo video for flocks or you can check out Swarms and Schools, part of the same series I called Critter Collection. But I won't talk any more about those. Uh, let's just look at the hummingbird now and I'll go over how to customize it in After Effects and make it fly. It does not work like the other birds in the flocks template and actually it doesn't even have a flock because hummingbirds are solitary. But I've made it really easy to use, so let's have a look. I'll go to the Hummingbird folder and I'll open up my Hummingbird comp here. And if we play it back, uh, we can see this default animation. Creating the flight path can be a little tricky, so I made this flight path so that you can look at the keyframes and see how I did it. Since Hummingbirds tend to hover, uh, we have to go over some things that I don't cover in the Flox tutorial. But uh, before I do that, let's look at the control layer. This is how you'll customize the bird's appearance and behavior. You can see we have lots of customization controls here, and they're very different from the other birds. All of those wiggle controls for the flock are gone. Uh, I'm not going to explain every one of these, but I want to point out a few highlights, uh, things you can do. If you turn on preview mode, it will put the bird in the center so that we can clearly see it as we customize. Uh, its appearance and the, the subtle body movements. And if you don't see the bird in preview mode, it's probably because you moved the camera. So what you can do is just go to the 3D view pop-up and choose front view. Uh, we can change the bird's orientation while in preview mode, and this only affects the bird while in preview mode. And notice how as I rotate the bird around, the layers fade out as we start to view them from the side. And you can turn that off with this checkbox here, Enable Angle-Based Layer Fade. Uh, I added this feature because when the camera becomes level with a layer, it creates these distracting lines. Nobody's ever complained about it, but it's always bothered me, so I added this feature for the hummingbird. And if you want to adjust the angle at which the fade starts and ends, you can edit these controls. All right, I'll close that and let's look at the, the flight and wing flapping controls. So maybe you can see the bird tilts or leans forward automatically as it flies faster. It tilts a maximum of 42 degrees uh, when it reaches a speed of 5,000 pixels per second. So you can change that here. And there's a, a wiggle amount and wiggle speed control here. I intended these to give it uh, some random subtle position wiggle when the bird is hovering so the body is not just completely still, uh, even though hummingbirds are pretty still when they hover. But you could also use this to add some random variation to its flight path and just keyframe the amount to increase a lot as the bird takes off and increase the speed a little bit too. And then the bird will randomly stray off of its motion path and it'll look a little bit more realistic, I think. And then just keyframe those values to go back down when the bird hovers. Uh, wing beats per second. I think hummingbirds flap their wings at something like 50 or more, um, but I liked it at 41. I thought it looked better. You can uh, adjust the shutter speed of the comp if you want to get more or less motion blur. Just open the composition settings panel and go to advanced and shutter angle is here and you can adjust the quality here. Uh, you could turn uh, beats per second way down and get a slow motion effect. 
and you can see how the wings uh, rotate forward and back as they flap. That's this control, the, the wing tilt amount. If you want to keyframe the wings manually, you can turn on manual control here and then use this wing rotation control. All right, the manual movement controls are next. Uh, we got all kinds of body movements you can keyframe here, and they use the puppet pin effect. So you can tilt its body forward and the head stays level, or uh, you can rotate the head. And then the automatic movements will do all of those same movements that are up here, but it will do them automatically and randomly, just to give it continuous little motions to make it more lifelike. You can adjust each movement individually with an amount control and a speed control. So you can increase the movements or uh, just turn all the amounts to zero if, if you want to turn them off completely. These first two named small jittery movements, uh, they add really quick and really small jittery movements to every part of the bird. And the speed of those movements is linked to the wing beats per second. All right, let's talk about creating a flight path. Uh, we do that on this first yellow layer named Profile. I'll hit the U key to reveal the layer's keyframes, and you can see I have keyframes on both the position and the X rotation to make the body tilt as it turns directions. If we unhide our instructions layer at the top, I have sort of a, a checklist here, uh, the steps that you should take to get a smooth flight path. Uh, but it'll help to see these in action. So let's create a flight path. Um, I'll delete the keyframes that are there. So let's start by animating the position. The bird is going to always orient itself or face the direction that it's moving. And it does that because auto orient is turned on. Um, if you ever need to turn that off and have complete control over the bird's orientation, you can right click this profile layer and go to transform and then auto orient and you can just set it to off. So I'm just gonna do something really simple. Uh, we'll have it fly into frame and have it hover for a little bit and then we'll fly it off frame and make it do a loop or something. So I'll just add a position keyframe right there and I'm gonna wanna zoom in a little bit. That's the plus key. And I'll just go forward a second or so and we can move it using the gizmo or by dragging the value and create this other keyframe. And let's say we want the bird to hover here for a second. We can just copy that keyframe and go forward a second and paste it. And now we'll have him maybe fly forward and then go way back here and fly off frame. If you hold down the shift key when you're dragging the values, it'll go a lot faster or further. I usually like to get just a really rough path done first and then I can go back later uh, and look at it from different angles and add the curves and get the timing right. So I'll just keep working on this. Uh, we'll move this guy back really far. All right, just from this angle, you can't really see what I did probably, uh, but let's look at it from top view, from the top down and we'll have to zoom out a bit. All right, so now we got an idea of what he's doing. Uh, we could adjust these if we wanted to. This is where he hovers, and I think I'm just gonna slide these over so that he hovers for two seconds. All right, we'll come back to top view a little later. Let's just preview what we got. Okay, we got issues. First of all, let's fix that orientation problem. You can see how he flips. He changes his orientation as soon as he reaches this keyframe. And uh, that's because he's stopped moving. And if you remember, he can only orient in the direction that he's moving. So he's motionless right now and he doesn't know which way to point. So to address that problem, what we do whenever he hovers, you actually need to keep him moving. Even if it's really slowly, it could just be a distance of 10 pixels and that would work. So uh, what I'll do is I'll go to that second keyframe where he finishes hovering and I'll just move him over in the same direction that he was moving. And let's look at that. Okay, it fixed the orientation problem. I mean, he's facing the right way, but you can see there's a tilt problem. 
He's tilting forward here and then he tilts up really quickly. Uh, if you remember on the control layer, uh, we had this max tilt angle. So when he reaches a certain speed, he tilts forward 42 degrees. So what we need to do is have him slow down to a stop and then his tilt will gradually decrease as he stops. So the general rule is for the starting keyframe of any motion, we would make it an easy ease out keyframe. So you can right click it, go to keyframe assistant and choose easy ease out. And for the stop or the ending keyframe of any motion, we'd make it an easy ease in keyframe. That'll make him slow down. And we're gonna need to do it again because there's another flight motion here. So we'll make this keyframe easy ease out. And this one will be easy ease in. You can see each of these little dots here represent a frame. And the frames are closer together here in the beginning and further apart here, which just shows us that he's going slower here and faster here. Uh, let's go back to top view. So we can see now, like with this keyframe, we can see he's going a different speed here than he is here. He's going a lot slower here. So with these middle keyframes, in between the start motion and the stop motion, we can select those and we'll smooth out his pace. Uh, we'll right click it and go to keyframe interpolation. And for temporal interpolation, we'll choose auto bezier. So that fixed the timing issue, but uh, we also need to convert this to a, a curve. So let me go back to keyframe interpolation and we'll do the same thing for spatial interpolation. Just do auto bezier. All right, that's still a, a pretty sharp angle and we can just adjust these handles. All right, we're not done yet, but let's give it a look. Right here, he changes directions really abruptly. So we're gonna need to uh, smooth out the path. And now that we're looking at this in uh, the camera view, we can adjust these keyframes a little more if we want to. And I'll select that keyframe and zoom in. And we need our pen tool for this. If you click and drag on a, on a point with the pen tool, it'll create handles. Now I want to unlock these two handles. I don't want to adjust that handle on the left side. I want to keep that level like that. So I'll hold down the Alt key to just move that one handle. And I'm going to do it for this one too. And I think we can do better with that beginning part of the flight as well. We can do something more interesting. We'll have them come up maybe. All right, whenever you're adjusting curves or a 3D motion path, you want to look at it in different views. So let's go to a top view again. That might not be enough. I might want to drag this out a little bit more. All right, let's preview it and see if we did that right. It looks pretty good. We still need to turn his body as he changes directions, like right here, his body should be tilted. So we can do that uh, with this X rotation property. So maybe uh, when he starts to take off, we'll add a keyframe with the value at zero. And then when he reaches that sharp curve, we'll tilt his body maybe 60 degrees or so. We'll make it a little bit less here, 50 degrees. And as he comes to a stop, uh, we can set it back to zero. And then I'll just select all those keyframes and convert them to easy ease. And one more thing we can do, uh, it always helps to look at your keyframes in the graph editor. That's this little icon here. And I'll select position. So you can see we've got two little curves for each of our little flight motions and uh, we want them to be completely smooth. Sometimes you can just drag 
the keyframes up a little bit and make it a little smoother. And that should be good enough. And people send me videos of their bird animations all the time. And the, and the most common problem I see is that they're animating them to fly too slow. And for the hummingbird especially, just keep it moving fast. And I would say this is too slow. They move faster than you think. If you can find some reference footage, uh, it's always a good idea to look at that. And one quick last thing I want to show you in case you want to have more than one hummingbird in an animation. Just duplicate that hummingbird comp. And in that comp, give the control layer a unique name. I'll just call this control layer 2. And now I'll select the control layer and then shift select that last layer. And be sure to do it in that order. And I'll copy them and paste them to the comp I'm working in. And I'll select this sky layer to uh, paste it down here. And then we can give this hummingbird its own flight path and customize it with its control layer. That's it. You can pick up your copy of the Flox template at creationeffects.com. I'll leave that link in the description. And then you can choose from a whole bunch of different species and add flocks of them to your videos. Or you can check out the Critter Collection series bundle, which includes flocks, but also has swarms for animating realistic swarms of insects. Or schools for making underwater scenes and schools of fish. Or if you want to poke around the site, I've got a lot of free downloads there, uh, free templates or After Effects presets that are useful for um, any motion designer. Or you can find a lot of really cool custom effects like the latest Blooming Flowers template, which lets you easily animate a variety of 3D flowers. Or the mixed media effect, which can quickly turn your footage into a mixed media animation. Or space effects, which includes all of the major celestial bodies like the sun and a black hole. And uh, you can customize them with easy controls to create your own animations. So I hope you check those out. That's it for me. Uh, keep creating and I'll catch you at the next video.